Prologue. Sow a thought and you reap an action. Sow an act and you reap a habit. Sow a habit and you reap a character. Sow a character and you reap a destiny. Ralph Waldo Emerson. If I had known how massive an impact the decisions I made in my late teens and early 20s would have on where I am today, I would have done things much differently. Honestly, it would have been good to know this information even earlier than that. But right around 20 years old is when things really started getting out of control. Even little decisions can ripple through the years into dramatic consequences later in life. It's like the ship that gets one degree off course at the beginning of its voyage. If it doesn't correct, it ends up miles and miles from its intended destination. The choices we make matter. On the surface, this book is a practical guide about how to form good relationships and get better at social interaction. In a deeper sense, it's about making good decisions. If I would have known the information contained in this book back when I was 20 years old, my life may have turned out much differently. I've gotten to a place where I'm pretty happy at this point. Still, I wonder what my life could have been like if I wouldn't have made so many poor decisions earlier on. Let me give you some examples. One late afternoon, my friend Jake and I decided to try out urban mountain biking. We went normal mountain biking in the woods pretty often, but we were stuck in the middle of the city on this particular afternoon. We decided to take our bikes and hit the University of Minnesota campus to see if there was anything that could give us the feel of real mountain biking. At first, we just messed around riding over small steps and cruising down ramps. Then I saw it. A stone bench that was about 25 feet long and about 2 feet off the ground. I got the bright idea of riding down the bench to get some speed and then bunny hopping sideways off of it. For some reason, I didn't tell Jake what I was about to try. Perhaps he would have talked some sense into me. There's a lesson on seeking counsel before making decisions. Regardless, I lifted my bike up on the bench, estimated how much speed I'd need, and started pedaling. The second my front tire left the bench, I knew I had made a mistake. A moment later, my face hit the pavement and someone from a group of pr prospective students visiting the campus yelled an expletive as he witnessed the crash. My face was in agony. My nose was broken and I was bleeding heavily. Man, I wish I had worn a helmet before attempting this stunt. There's another lesson. When I stood up, I looked at the bench and realized there were these metal plates sticking up about a half inch out of it every few feet. They were there to prevent skateboarders from doing tricks on the bench. My mind wasn't processing things very well at that time, but later I realized my front tire had hit one of these plates right as I was launching off, causing me to flip over the handlebars and nosedive into the concrete. Thankfully, I walked away without any serious brain damage, but the fall still left a permanent reminder. My nose healed back crooked and I have a scar on my upper lip. A series of bad decisions led to a crash that permanently disfigured a part of my face. It's nothing horrible, I'm still a good looking guy. I just wanted to illustrate how little decisions can lead to major consequences and how it only takes a brief moment for your life to change permanently. This also wasn't the worst or the only poor decision I made around that time. My life was a whole cacophony of them. Let's take money, for example. I worked a lot in my late teens and early 20s, so I made a decent amount of income. Instead of saving any of it, I blew it on useless entertainment, eating out at fast food restaurants, and drugs and alcohol. The amount of money I spent on drugs and alcohol alone is mind-blowing. There were times where I was probably blowing around $800 a month on mind-altering substances, not to mention all the ways I threw money away due to being intoxicated. If I would have invested that money, 
I probably would have tens of thousands of extra dollars in the bank without even factoring in interest or opportunity cost. There were also many poor decisions regarding time. The number of hours sunk into video games and mindless entertainment was astronomical. I basically did the bare minimum required to get through school and spent the rest of my time in pleasure-seeking hedonism. I got good grades, but that's an incredibly low bar to hit. What could I have accomplished if I hadn't wasted so many hours on pointless nonsense? It didn't even have to be something super productive. What if instead of playing sports on a video game console, I actually went and practiced a sport in real life? I had potential in hockey. Perhaps I would have actually gotten pretty good if I had practiced more. Perhaps I could have picked up a musical instrument. The possibilities are endless. Then there were my poor decisions regarding relationships which I must mention since that's the theme of this book. The lifestyle I lived lent itself to dysfunctional relationships. For years, I totally rejected my family. I didn't want them judging my behavior, so I simply abandoned them. The people I spent my time with were the people I partied with. Some of them were decent friends, but weren't necessarily good influences on the way I lived my life. When it came to romantic relationships, that was also a mess. I was extremely anxious around girls. Instead of learning how to interact with them properly, I just numbed my anxiety by getting intoxicated. The problem with this was that I was unable to develop anything lasting or meaningful and often ended up hooking up with girls who were as much of a mess as I was. There were a few times I had the opportunity to date high quality women and I threw them away because I didn't know what to do. If I had made better decisions, I might be married or have kids by now. And I don't know if it's even possible for me to have kids anymore because of my spinal cord injury. Which brings me to the worst decision I ever made. I decided to test my limits on a dirt bike after not having ridden one for over a year. I crashed after attempting a jump and another rider crashed into me leaving me permanently paralyzed and totally upheaving my life and the lives of my family. That one was on another level. In an instant, everything changed. I'm fortunate to even be alive. As you can hopefully learn from my life, the choices we make today impact the place we end up tomorrow. If I could give my younger self some advice, I'd tell him to do things today that the older version of himself would thank him for. Really, I would give that advice to anyone. It's something I often try to remind myself of, and it's helped me in numerous situations. Nowadays, whenever I de desire to do something I know isn't good for me, I think about what it could mean for my future. I ask myself, Will this put me in a better spot later on? Sometimes it's okay to take risks, but often I think about what I'm about to do and realize I should do something else. Our modern world is steeped in instant gratification. We expect things at an ever accelerating rate. This makes it easy to fall into the trap of seeking short-term pleasure at the cost of losing long-term fulfillment. The internet and technology only compound this effect. Young people are growing up in a world full of temptations towards bad decision-making. Instead of learning, they ask Google. Instead of cooking a meal, they eat fast food garbage. Instead of marriage and family, they seek hookups and independence. Young people often don't realize what they're sacrificing by the decisions they make. Through this book, I hope to inspire at least a few of them to consider the choices they make so that they can set themselves up for success. Do something today that your future self will thank you for.